Hey everyone, John Algio with the GSSI training team here to give you some more tips on how to get the most out of your Flex NX. I'm here at our Nashua, New Hampshire headquarters, and I'm going to demonstrate some concepts for marking out a 2x2 core penetration on a pan decking slab. It's common, both during and after construction, to core through the floors of a building. To do this safely, it's important to scan the floor with GPR to ensure that the drillers don't hit reinforcement, conduits, or pipes strapped to the bottom of the slab. Typically, a contractor will lay out coring locations, and the GPR operator will scan a 2 foot by 2 foot area around the core location. It's your job to find a safe space for the core in that 4 square foot area. The Flex NX's dual channel data collection allows us to collect standard and cross-polarized radar data at the same time. This will give us two different looks at what's in the slab and help us identify targets more easily, as well as let us double check our work. As always, I'm going to start with a site walk. In an office building like this, check for any nearby utility rooms to see if conduits or pipes are entering the slab. Also take a look at the bottom of the slab from the floor beneath and look up into any drop ceilings. Here we can see that I am going to be scanning pan decking today. When scanning pan decking, you should mark the edges of the high and low points in the decking. Oftentimes, conduit will be routed through the lows of the pan decking. These conduits can be very difficult to locate. This is because the troughs in the pan decking bounce the GPR signal around erratically making it so that the conduits do not always produce a clear hyperbola. If the conduit is running along the highs or perpendicular to the decking orientation, they are easier to locate. Therefore, it is standard practice to mark the troughs in the decking and request that your client drill through the high points instead in a location that you have cleared of conduits or other obstructions. Let's take a look at a scan on our practice slab, which has non-metallic conduits running through the troughs of pan decking. Scanning perpendicular to the conduits in the decking, we can see the wire mesh in the normal orientation channel, appearing as a planar reflector in the cross-polarized channel, as well as the tops and bottoms of the decking. Though there appear to be some hyperbolas in the data, these don't match up with the location of our conduits, which appear to be undetectable. Often, each flat part of the pan decking will create two crossing hyperbolas, generated by the corners of the decking. There are many sizes and shapes of pan decking, though, and the GPR data they produce may look significantly different from one type to another. I'm now ready to start my scan, and as always, I'm going to start with a long scan to get an understanding of the slab I'm working on. We can see that in one direction, the only thing evident is wire mesh and a planar reflector from the top of the pan decking. Because I'm scanning at a bit of an angle to the decking, I cross from scanning over a high in the decking to scanning over a low, and the planar reflection, representing the bottom of the slab, shifts deeper. Scanning in the other direction, we can see a few hyperbolas from the wire mesh, as well as the highs and lows of the pan decking, which I will mark out next. Working perpendicular to the decking direction, I'm going to start by locating the transition points between the highs and the lows of the decking. The flat, planar reflectors at two different depths represent the points where the flex NX is directly over the high point or the trough. In between the highs and the lows, different brands of pan decking can be designed differently. Some pan decking has vertical metal walls connecting the highs to the lows, creating square-shaped troughs. Some decking has sloped metal leading from the highs to the lows. To be conservative and safe, I recommend marking the edge of the highs as the start of the lows. This means that no matter what, the transition point from high to low gets marked as part of the trough, which keeps the drilling crew farther away from any conduit that may be lying in that trough. I'm going to locate both sides of the decking high points three times each. I'll align my cursor with the edge of the highs, using whichever data channel gives me a clearer view of that edge. To mark a point, I will mark both sides of the antenna, and then mark in the middle of those two marks. The middle mark is the actual point that corresponds to your cursor location on the flex. I'll then connect my three points via a straight line. Since I'm on carpet, I'm using painter's tape. I will use thin painter's tape to mark the edges of the highs and lows, as well as smaller, less consequential objects like rebar, if it is present. If I locate a conduit or cable, I will either mark it double wide or use wider tape to keep the drillers farther away from it. I noticed something surprising while scanning and marking the pan decking here. I believe that there may be a conduit in the trough of the decking. Let's take another scan. 
As I mentioned earlier, pandecking often produces hyperbolas, as we can see here. However, there is one hyperbola that catches my eye. I believe this hyperbola may represent a conduit. It is a stronger reflection than the hyperbolas in the other troughs, and it appears to be shallower than the maximum depth of the decking trough itself. And on a less technical note, it just looks different. It stands out from the patterns we see in the rest of the data. Sometimes you have to rely on your gut. I can't say with 100% certainty that this is a conduit, but there is enough doubt in my mind that I would always mark it as a conduit to be safe. As a general rule, when in doubt, mark it out. Find somewhere to drill that you can confidently say is safe. Let's take a flex mode scan of the area to see if I can identify that potential conduit. I'll center the flex in my scan area, start the flex mode scan, and push flex back and forth to calibrate its position. Then I simply need to roll the device back and forth across a 2 by 4 foot scan area. The SLAM positioning system will keep track of where the unit is and trigger it to collect data as you move it around. The survey wheels are not used for positioning in this mode. And because we have two antennas in the flex, one rotated 90 degrees relative to the other, we only need to collect scans along one axis. Once we have decent scan coverage of our area, I'll hit the stop button and wait a minute while the flex generates a 3D model of the slab. Here is a screenshot from the flex mode model. There is a linear feature in the shallow subsurface that aligns with the location of the target I have marked as a conduit. I'm still not 100% certain this is a conduit, but I am 100% certain that I'm going to mark it as one for safety. I'll use wide painter's tape, write conduit or possible conduit on the tape using a red marker, and put red dashes on the tape so any driller will know that this is something to avoid. I hope these tips and tricks help you feel a little more confident on your next pan decking scan job. Make sure to ask any questions in the comments or email us at training at geophysical.com. And let us know what videos you'd like to see us produce next.